How's your Spanish? Uh, no, muy bueno. <laughs> Bernie Sanders recently appeared on Telemundo, and everything that he said during this interview with regard to electability and the correct electoral strategy needed to defeat Donald Trump, we've all been saying in independent media for years now. So it feels really good to be, um, to feel validated that he actually hears our concerns, or maybe he just uh, thinks in a similar way because these are common sense things, right? I mean, if you want to win, obviously, you don't try to win over moderate Republicans. You try to excite your own base. You've got to win them over first. You appeal to independents and voters who don't often vote. You galvanize young voters. So, I mean, these are things that if you are a Democratic Party strategist, then you should know this like the back of your head. But the fact that only a fraction of people are saying it it's a little bit worrying because it tells me that if we nominate someone who is not Bernie Sanders or progressive, that they may not necessarily know the correct strategy to beat Donald Trump. And hey, guess what? If he gets four more years, that means that Republicans control the Supreme Court possibly for decades longer because he will almost certainly appoint another one or two Supreme Court justices. So we can't mess this up. We have to get someone as the nominee who will know how to win, who's electable. And that person is Bernie Sanders. And he demonstrated that, I think, very clearly in this interview. Uh, President Donald Trump has said, has called many Democrats uh, radicals and socialists. And many believe that for the Democrats to go back into the White House, they need to nominate a much more moderate candidate. What do you say to that? I think they're dead wrong. Uh, we tried that in 2016. It didn't quite work. That's why we got Donald Trump. Uh, I think we need a candidate who can clearly defeat Trump, and all of the polling out there has me defeating Trump, uh, especially in battleground states like Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and others. We're doing very well against Trump. What you need to do to defeat Trump are two things. Number one, you have to energize what I call the Democratic base and that is the African-American community, the Latino community, the young people of this country who are overwhelmingly progressive. You need to get them excited and energized. I think our ideas can do that. Second thing you have to do is go into those states where Trump was strong and he won and explain to Trump's supporters that he lied to them, that he just tried to throw 32 million people off of health insurance that is not supporting working class people. That was the perfect answer because we keep hearing this from moderate Democrats who are running for president. Look, if you're a socialist, you're going to lose to Donald Trump. So we need someone like me, John Delaney or Michael Bennett, who's a grown up, who's a moderate, who's going to tell voters what they can't have rather than what we can possibly achieve. That's not going to work. Bernie's response was absolutely perfect. We tried that before, and it's not like we tried this in 1994 or 1996, whenever the presidential election was back then. I think it was 19, 1996, yeah. Oh, it's not like we tried this back in 1972. We tried this in 2016, and it didn't work out too well. Because the reason why we got Donald Trump in the first place is because there were a number of conditions that facilitated his rise. I mean, Democrats, they were just doing status quo keeping neoliberal nonsense and it wasn't addressing all of the concerns that people had so they were desperate and what happened well that desperation led to radicalization as it usually does and now we have donald trump and they think that oh we just need someone who acts like a grown-up and who's a moderate that's how we defeat him no that's not what you have to do you need to be unapologetically progressive now more than ever because that's how you excite your own base and you need them to win. That's how you excite millennials who are one of the largest voting blocks, if not the largest voting block, depending on if we actually turn out, which is highly contingent on who runs, who's the nominee. It's got to be someone progressive. Otherwise, I think our chances are very slim of winning back the White House. Now, additionally, he said, look, we've tried that before, and also polling has me defeating Donald Trump. When you look at these swing states, the Rust Belt, where Donald Trump was successful, where Hillary Clinton lost, Bernie is polling higher 
than Donald Trump. So I think it's likely that Bernie would probably win the popular vote, vote, as did Hillary Clinton. But what we really need is him to win the right states. We need him to have a strategy that will allow him to win both the popular vote and the Electoral College. And when you look at polling, early polling, but polling nonetheless, he's outperforming Donald Trump in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, in these states that are crucial if we want to beat Trump. Bernie Sanders then lays out the exact strategy needed to take back the White House. One, you energize the base. Yes, this should be common sense, but not many people get that, surprisingly. He then says, you go into states where Trump was strong, and you explain how he lied. And you can kind of already get a snapshot as to how Bernie S Sanders' strategy will work, because he's posting these ads from states like, I think, Wisconsin, where he's saying, um, this is what Donald Trump promised. How has that been working out for you? And he talks to real people who acknowledge, look, we were duped. We were lied to by Donald Trump. That's the exact strategy you need to win. But yet there's a lot of people who are opting for Joe Biden simply because they think he is more electable. You voted for someone in 2016 that you thought was more electable. Didn't pan out that way. Maybe just vote for someone who excites people or vote for someone who you genuinely believe in. Because maybe it'll also be the case that other people think the same way. So I want to get to another video. So he was asked what I think is a ridiculous question. I don't necessarily know that the interviewer believed this. Maybe he was playing devil's advocate, but nonetheless, it's an absolutely preposterous notion. But Bernie Sanders swats it away and he says something that we've all been saying. He would have won against Donald Trump in 2016. Do you feel responsible in any way for Hillary Clinton's defeat? Some people well, say you divided the, the No, party. the only thing I feel responsible for is I didn't win the nomination, because if I won the nomination, I would have defeated Donald Trump. So why, you don't think that you've divided the party, some people are going towards your... Look, 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 we are taking on the establishment, all right? That's the Democratic establishment, that's the media establishment, that's Wall Street and the drug companies and the insurance companies, we're taking them on. So a lot of people will say a lot of things. Last that I heard, in a democratic society, one is allowed to run for office, that we don't anoint people. I suppose there are some folks out there who say, let's anoint Joe Biden. Why do we have 24 candidates? Well, I don't agree with that. So I'm proud, by the way, that my campaign brought in a whole lot of young people that are helping to transform this country politically, including a lot of Latino youth. So Bernie's answer was really good. I'm just... I'm sick of having to entertain this idea that Bernie Sanders, of all people, is responsible for Donald Trump's victory. That is absurd. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. So we need to move past this notion that Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party wasn't at fault themselves. And we need to acknowledge that they lost because they sucked, because they demonstrated that they were out of touch. So to even speculate about whether or not Bernie Sanders had anything to do with Hillary Clinton's defeat after he campaigned for her, and to assume or assert rather that he divided the party, like it's just downright offensive, like you're saying something that's undemocratic. Do you believe in democracy or do you not? Well, then you need to live by democracy or not. Just say you're against democracy if you believe that Bernie Sanders... Um, divided the party by running against Hillary Clinton. It's absurd. And I think that Bernie Sanders had the perfect answer. Look, the only way I feel responsible is because I didn't win myself. If I would have won the nomination, I would have become president. And he's right. Now, last clip that I'm going to show you. He was asked why he thinks what he's saying is resonating with millennials, who again... Democrats really need to energize if they want to win. And why do you think that young people feel so identified with you? Because clearly I'm a very young person. <laughs> what other answer is that? <laughs> no, I, I think two reasons. Young people today, the younger generation in this country is the most progressive generation in the history of this country. They're anti-racist, anti-sexist, anti-homophobic, anti-religious bigotry. They are concerned about climate change. So it's an idealistic generation, and I think we speak to that. Second answer is, 
everything being equal unless we change it, and I intend to change it, the younger generation will have, for the first time in modern American history, a lower standard of living than their parents. Now, why is that? We're the richest country on earth. You got all this technology, all this computers, all this robotics. Why are kids looking to have a lower standard of living than their parents? And we speak for that. We say, if you have the ability and desire, you should be able to get a public education. You should be able to go to a public university or college tuition free. We're going to forgive student debt. We say that health care is a human right. We're going to have Medicare for all. We say that climate change is real. We're going to transform our energy system. That if you are able to work in the United States, we are going to guarantee you a decent paying job. Those are ideas that younger people uh, gravitate toward. It really is that simple. He's talking about the issues that we care about. And more importantly, we believe him. Bernie Sanders says he wants to tackle climate change, not because he thinks that's what will win him votes, not because that's the politically expedient position to take if you are running to be the presidential nominee of, you know, the Democratic Party. I believe him when he says that. I do. So he comes across as authentic and believable because he practices what he preaches. He doesn't take PAC money. So when he says that he supports Medicare for all, I believe him. When Michael Bennett, for example, says that he doesn't support Medicare for All, and it's because he thinks that it's bad policy, I don't believe him. I think he's saying that because he takes money from health insurance companies. So there's a credibility gap that's missing with other Democratic Party presidential contenders, and millennials see it. We really need someone who will actually fight for us. Bernie has a phenomenal record, and he's talking about the policies that we care about. That's why... We support him. It's really that simple. So with that being said, this was a really interesting interview. I'm going to link you to the full thing. He also talked about immigration and whatnot, but I didn't cover that because Bernie Sanders already largely said the same thing in other interviews. But what he said here about his strategy in the event he's the nominee and us needing to energize the base and how he would have beaten Donald Trump if he were the nominee in 2016. Great stuff. I knew that he thought this. It's just nice to really hear him say it. Finally. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.